Okay, Peloton, let's go. Hey, Sandra Munich, 50 rides, great. Max in Berlin, los geht's. Come on, Peloton. Peloton is the greatest thing ever to exist. The bike is amazing value. It's worth every penny on the stock market because this thing is going to revolutionize fitness. What? A $2,000 bike with a subscription built by a mostly unprofitable company with a WeWork style valuation that runs sexist ads. Are you freaking kidding me? Now, I personally love my Peloton, but whatever you think about the product, the marketing behind such an amazing growth story is absolutely fascinating. And in this video, we're gonna look at what they've done with their digital marketing to help fuel that growth, what else they could be doing to take things to a new level, and of course, what the lessons are that we can all apply to our non-Peloton businesses. And by the way, I totally did not expect what I found. They are leaving some serious money on the table. More on that later. And then intro. <laughs> Peloton. Is it a content company? Is it a technology company? Is it a fitness company? Or does it meet at the intersection of who cares? It's an amazing growth story. Let's find out exactly how they've made it such a super monster. I'm going to give you some numbers. A little bit pointless because at the time of filming this late 2020, they're still on a massive growth trajectory. But just to give you an indication of where things are at at the time of filming this, they're predicting 2021 revenue of $3.5 billion. They have around 1 million members with equipment, so either the bike or the treadmill, and about 3 million members with app subscriptions. They're getting around 205,000 connected fitness subscribers, which is basically someone who buys one of the products and the subscription on the back and we can estimate based on their yearly marketing budget that they're spending around 75 to 90 million dollars per quarter on marketing now back of a fag packet calculation look at this thing <laughs> That gives us an average cost per connected fitness subscriber of between $365 and $400. Have you ever seen anything like that? Now, this is pretty decent, to say the least, considering that person is going to be spending a couple of grand on a piece of equipment and then the subscription on the back end. Happy days. These numbers look good. So what have they done to get there? What's potentially even more decent is that there's talk recently that they've pulled back quite significantly on this marketing spend due to lockdown and all the brand awareness that they've built up. So whether this is part of a long-term strategic shift from running loads of brand building ads to start milking some of that brand awareness they've built up, only time will tell. But before we can go into the details of the digital marketing, we really need to think about their business model because actually the sales funnel and the business model mean that they can do a lot of the stuff that they've been doing and get those numbers. There's no two ways about it. This is a high cost initial product like $2,000 for the bike and I think $4,000 for the trail treadmill with a medium cost subscription. So on the back end, it's I think £39 a month, which isn't crazy high. It's not ludicrously high, but it's also not super cheap either. Now, this is a fantastic model. Obviously, this initial high sunk cost is going to increase retention on the back end because if you've just spent $2,000 or pounds on a bike, you're going to be paying that monthly subscription. Otherwise, that initial investment is a total waste. Now, we're seeing this model become really popular at the moment. We've just bought a new food processor here and guess what? It comes with a subscription. What else can I think of that's stupid that might come with a subscription in the future? You can get a doorbell with a subscription. Who knows what we will find ways to add subscriptions to in the future. But also, this high initial sunk cost gives you leverage against the user to actually use the product. So, if you're thinking of buying a Peloton bike but you're put off by that high initial cost, consider this. Once you get the bike, because you've invested all that money in it, you're much more likely to use it and get the benefit. So you can actually say, Sell this as a benefit to the user. Sell what you've got. Now, a little while back, Peloton actually shifted the model and opened up subscriptions to non-equipment users, i.e. you could download the Peloton app and take out a subscription just on the app. Now, this for me is a massive thing because what this does is it gives people a tripwire product to sign up for. Those who weren't ready to commit to the product but were interested in the subscription, well, great, you can get that, you can become part of the ecosystem and they can start getting some revenue out of you knowing over time that there's a decent chance you're going to end up shifting some cash for the bike. This subscription offer also gives them a marketing tool that they can use. So at the start of lockdown, when they opened the app subscription with a free trial, 
amazing. The press that they got from this was massive. Having a lower cost app subscription with actually very little variable cost for them delivering that to their customers also gives them something they can use in their marketing. So for example, when lockdown started and all us desperate gym goers were caged in our homes, well, Peloton were there to capitalize on the situation by offering a free trial. Now it's reported that since the start of lockdown, they've actually pulled back a little on their paid media, according to Gartner, because this app free trial was getting so much organic attention that they really didn't need to run ads to it. It was selling itself. Now, obviously it can only sell itself if you have that brand awareness in the first place. And obviously Peloton has invested heavily over the years in more traditional media like TV ads to build that level of awareness where they can throw up the app with a subscription and people will be talking about it. It has to have entered the public consciousness in order for you to kind of run with that just purely on the back of organic word of mouth. Now talking about brand awareness, let's take a look at some data. We can see using Google Trends that Peloton's brand awareness has increased significantly over time, peaking of course with everyone's favorite sexist TV ad back in the end of last year. We can also see using SEMrush that the majority of the traffic coming to their site from organic search is branded traffic, i.e. they're not getting loads of people that are typing exercise bike into Google, they're mostly getting people that are typing Peloton into Google. So this shows that there's a huge amount of brand awareness with 1.5 million searches per month estimated in the US alone for Peloton. Now we know that Peloton loves brand awareness. By far their biggest marketing approach has been to drive brand awareness. This isn't a business that is focused on cost per acquisition acquisition and generating leads. This is a business that's like they're happy to share out ads which have very few calls to action. We can see from their backlink profile, for example, if we just look at sites categorized as news in SEMrush, they've got links from everywhere and multiple times. All the major news publications around the world have spoken about Peloton. Now much of this appears to have come from actual PR, i.e. stuff that they have done. But obviously Peloton is now at a stage where it kind of gets its own PR. So for example, when Apple unveils Fitness Plus, its subscription fitness service, everyone immediately looks at what Peloton's doing, what's happening with the Peloton stock price. Because it's entered the public awareness at that sort of level, it's picking up a lot of this attention organically without having to do any outreach, without having to push out to the world at all. New quarterly update comes out, bam, everyone's talking about it, what's the stock price doing, all that type of stuff. So it's now entered the kind of super category where it doesn't really have to go out and pick up PR in order to get links and get a attention. It just kind of happens because it's so freaking massive. So what about the digital marketing side of things? Because that's the majority of what we're going to be looking at today. So this is a business that has grown through massive brand advertising, you know, TV ads, PR, display. But what about the role of hardcore digital marketing to its growth? What about a more modern marketing approach? Well, when I was researching this video, I was honestly expecting to see a really awesome, highly tuned, modern brand built using great digital marketing. Because it's technology, you know, often technology businesses are very focused on ROI, CPA, you know, how many leads are we generating, making sure we're really optimizing all of our digital channels. And because it's fitness, I expected to see them absolutely killing it with social media. But actually what I found was really shocking. The SEO, pretty whack. Honestly, yeah, they're getting lots of traffic, but once you take out Peloton, their instructor names, some, weird spellings of Peloton. Really, they're hardly ranking for anything. Their PPC, which we'll come back to later, is really inconsistent and honestly pretty amateur. Now they go pretty heavy with video content, but their YouTube channel leaves a lot to be desired. If I was gonna be kind, I'd say that their website content strategy felt like an afterthought. If I was gonna be honest, it felt like no one had ever thought about it. Honestly, when it comes to digital marketing, they're really not doing that great. So let's take a look at each of their channels and let's think about what we would do if we were trying to grow Peloton because there's lots of lessons in there. Let's start with paid ads. Now remember that Peloton has two goals. We have the product sale and also we have the app subscription. Now the product sale comes with a subscription of course, but really those are the two types of customers that we want. It's not particularly easy to see what's going on with app store ads, but we can see from this Apple search ads case study that Peloton has used Apple ads very effectively and not only 
does it tell us that they've used them very effectively to get new subscribers at a much reduced cost it also tells us that they've been targeting competitor app terms in order to get those sales <laughs> well i'm glad to see they're doing something aggressive here so maybe they have done this with google ads too because you could target all manner of different keywords in google and try to get people who are searching for those terms to sign up for peloton instead let's take a look well, as you can see, they're running hardly any ads at the moment and the stuff they are running tends to be branded searches targeting at people with misspellings. If we go back to January, we see they were being much more aggressive targeting both product terms like treadmill, but also competitor terms like P90X and yoga classes near me. They seem to have made the decision during lockdown to turn all of this stuff off. Whereas here in the UK, they're still targeting some of those terms. And in fact, they've increased their visibility for some of these phrases. So does this mean that they're making money from them in the UK, but not in the US? That feels pretty unlikely. Why is there no coherent global strategy? Strategy. In Canada, which is another important market for them, they don't seem to be running any ads at all. A little bit weird. So what about social media? Because you'd expect social to be massive. <laughs> We've done an in-depth analysis of Gymshark's digital marketing, which is predominantly social media. So you'd think being in a fitness space and with a, I guess, a similar sort of audience, you would expect Peloton to go really heavy with their social media as well. Mm, well, I mean, let's take a look at their YouTube channel. Honestly, does this look like the YouTube channel of a business rumored to be spending a third of a billion dollars a year on marketing in the fitness space, which is obviously massive on YouTube? Not really. We got 27,000 subscribers. This channel hasn't really had much attention at all. And the strategy, honestly, is completely promotional. There's no real attempt here to get viewers organically. Massive discrepancy in the viewer numbers. We can have a video like this this with 372,000 videos and other videos with like 5,800 views. So this indicates that obviously they're putting a lot of budget behind the paid side of YouTube, but actually, you know, they're not really trying to do anything with YouTube organically. They're not really trying to build a community here at all, in my opinion. Now, some of these videos have great production value, but they're just not getting the traction. And when we look at an individual video, we can see why. Really unoptimized title, hardly any description at all. This is like totally paid. They're not even trying to pick up organic visibility here. Now, here's the thing that is most frustrating to me. Peloton has so much content in their platform. If we take a look at a business like Calm, which is actually reasonably similar in that it has a lot of content on their platform, which people pay for access to through the app, we can see their approach is completely different. What they do here is they post short snippets of their Calms. Yes, they use them for paid ads, but they're sharing the content from inside the app with people on YouTube in order to get them hooked and to get them test driving the app. There's not really any attempt from Peloton to do that. Instead, what they're doing is just sharing promotional videos rather than like, here's a demo ride that you can try. You know, people could hook their iPad up or they could hook their phone up with an exercise bike that they've got at home and just test drive a Peloton workout. The instructors on Peloton are amazing. They're a massive asset to the platform. So just let people take a trial, have a look at a video on YouTube and just give it a go. That's gonna lead to app subscriptions, which will lead to the product purchase as well but they don't seem to be doing any of this at all. So given that Peloton already has a free app trial, I just consider making some of the classes taster free available on YouTube just to get people involved. If you look at the volumes around exercise classes on YouTube, it's too big an opportunity to ignore in my opinion. The market is there, the people want it, the content quality on Peloton is great. So let's give the people what they want and know that some of them are gonna turn into app subscribers. Now one social channel that they are doing pretty well on is Instagram. Now on Instagram, it's kind of interesting because not only do they have their main Peloton page, but the instructors often have their own Instagram channels. Now, from my perspective, the instructors get Instagram much more than the core Peloton page does. Here we're on Robin Arzon's page. She's got great engagement, lots of followers. She recognizes that Instagram and social media is all about the person and the connection with the person. And that's what her page is all about. Now, these instructors are living their best lives. This is Alex Tucson, another Peloton instructor, sharing the fact that Peloton was featured in ESPN and it's all these high profile players are using the platform. So they get it, they're using this for social proof. So is there any of that excitement, that energy on the actual Peloton page? 
to an extent, I really want to see them tapping into the product. And the product isn't the bike. The product is the instructors. So motivational, inspiring, funny quotes from the instructors. I would watch a video of Cody Rigsby's best bits all day long. Let's build these instructors into superstars, into gods like Gymshark does. If you look at the Gymshark page, yes, there's product, but it's all about the influence. It's all about the person and they're celebrating the person. With Peloton, I get much less that impression. But let's also see behind the scenes, you know, let's give people something that they can't get. At the moment, so much of Peloton's content is just promotional, promotional, promotional. And I think what people really want on social is to see a little bit behind the curtain, get to know the people involved more. Let's talk about their Facebook. Man, if we want to talk about untapped marketing potential, check out Peloton's Facebook page. Jeez. So really good follower numbers, actually pretty strong organic engagement as well. But at the moment, the main problem with the Peloton page is that it's pretty much just broadcast. They're not really looking to drive any engagement at all. So for example, we've got this picture of someone's Peloton setup. Why not turn this into a weekly feature? You know, this week we're going to be looking at basement Peloton setups. Send us a photo of yours in the comments. You've got posts like this where under the comments, people are saying, how do we do this? How do I get this list? How do I get this functionality? Nothing. Has Peloton replied? Have they released a tutorial showing you how to get this great additional functionality that no one really knows about? People are begging for tutorials about hidden features. This is such an opportunity. And by the way, if you're thinking about buying a Peloton and you go on their Facebook page, what are you going to find? You're going to find people complaining about their missed and cancelled deliveries. Peloton, answer them. Give them a delivery date, make it okay. <laughs> Find a way, give them free app subscription until their bike arrives, whatever you have to do to publicly make it okay. Because if people are thinking about buying this and they go on the page and all they see is people complaining and they haven't even got on their equipment yet, this is not good. And this from a business that is constantly talking about building community and the benefits of community in their marketing. Here is your community. And they're just kind of hanging out and getting almost nothing in return. Okay, just to turn the screw, let's talk about their Twitter. We've got to go there. Let's go again about Gymshark and how they've turned their people into gods. They've turned their athletes, the Gymshark athletes, into these superhero characters. They now have people throwing themselves at Gymshark trying to become a sponsored athlete because they know that once they are a sponsored athlete, Gymshark is going to promote them across all their social channels and make them into superheroes. Now, Peloton's instructors are at least as engaging. Like I said, I've watched videos of Cody Rigsby's funniest bits, but who produced that video? It wasn't Peloton. It wasn't Peloton giving out social content. It was some... Cody Rigsby super weird fan that put this video together. Here we find yet more evidence of inconsistency across all the platforms. Peloton posting just finished a bar class, that slow burn. What sort of personality is that? Is this a person who's tweeting? Is this like the marketing manager of Peloton or is this Peloton the organization? Like what's going on? We've got these promotional messages like constant, then we've got things that are trying to go viral and then we've also got like quotes from people and then we've got just finished a bar class. Like what is this? We've got tweets like this from Alicia Keys where she's calling out quotes from particular instructors, celebrating them. Of course, Robin retweeted it, the instructor, another Peloton instructor tweeted it. What about Peloton? In fact, let me just cover this. Celebrities around the world freaking love Peloton. Hugh Jackman posting his stats publicly on Peloton. Everyone freaks out. Wow, wow, wow. Would you know this from any of Peloton's pages? Hell no. There is no sign of any celebrities being retweeted, reposted, any of that. And this isn't about not having brand ambassador deals in place. This is about Alicia Keys or Hugh Jackman tweets or posts about your product. You just be like, oh, cool. Thanks. Let's retweet that. Let's share that. That's massive credibility. Nothing. Oh, and by the way, when they do ask a question, when they do try and engage with the audience, look, massive, massive engagement levels. But do they share any of this stuff? Do they celebrate their members saying things like most fun I've ever had exercising, never knew I could love it this much? No. Better just go back to broadcasting promotional videos. Okay, you know Exposure Ninja, you know we love a website content strategy and its ability to completely blow up businesses. So let's take a look at Peloton's website content strategy. Okay, here we're looking at the pages on the Peloton site that are getting any organic visibility at all. What do we see? We see the only content on the Peloton site is either about the bike, its support stuff, 
there's nothing else here. This is shop stuff. This is product pages. This is category pages. There is an article section, but it's all support. There is no attempt at content strategy whatsoever. Let's contrast this with somebody like Gymshark. Well, they've got this amazing article section on the site, which is basically a magazine that's attached to the site and designed to rank for loads of fitness related terms, getting people onto the site, building the site's visibility. Could Peloton do this? Absolutely. What about my protein? Same thing, huge informational content section on the back of the site that drives loads and loads of traffic from a qualified visitor, getting them onto the My Protein site where they can click on links to get through to the products and category pages. Could Peloton do this? Absolutely, all day long. Tips about how to lose fat, tips about how to improve cardio health, workout tips, exercise bike choosing tips, seat position tips, all of this stuff would be great content that they could get ranked for really relevant informational terms. Getting people onto the site who are looking to best workouts at home, you know, great, get them onto the site, give them some tips on how to work out at home. And of course, one of those tips is gonna be, you might consider something like Peloton. Here are some great testimonials and tweets quoting from people who've actually given us these testimonials. Oh, here are some shared images and posts from celebrities who've posted about how much they love Peloton. Maybe you might want to check out Peloton. The traffic they could drive from this is so, so big. During lockdown, organic search for all home workout related stuff went through the roof. They're not capitalizing on this at all. Now you see what I mean. I honestly wasn't expecting this from a company like Peloton with the growth that Peloton has. I wasn't expecting their digital marketing to be so weak. So let's talk about lessons learned. The first lesson that we can learn from this is that brand advertising and brand marketing works. You're gonna need budget to invest at the level that Peloton has in order to get the widespread visibility that they have. But look at what business they've grown with almost no good quality targeted digital marketing. This is such an advert for brand advertising. For many businesses that are growing without huge investment behind them, this isn't gonna be viable. To get that level of brand awareness where it's actually turning into sales requires a huge amount of investment over an extended extended period of time, often with very little payoff for an extended period of time. So it's simply not practical for most small and medium sized businesses to pursue this strategy. There's also a brutal truth in that most brand advertising is completely wasted because it's falling on completely deaf ears of people who just simply aren't interested. Anytime you're running TV ads, you're usually wasting a significant portion of your budget on people that just aren't your target customer. And of course, Peloton has been growing so rapidly that it's natural they don't have everything perfect. It might seem like I'm being a bit harsh on them here, but the reality is they're a relatively new business. So it's not ridiculous to think that they're not going to have everything in place. But having said that, there are huge opportunities across all digital channels here. Someone is going to get this on social media. Maybe it'll be Peloton, maybe it'll be one of their competitors. Someone is going to get this with SEO and pay-per-click as well. Those markets are there. You know, if you're selling an exercise bike with a subscription on the back end against other stores that are just selling a bike, guess who? can afford to pay more for that click? Who can afford to pay more for that sale? Obviously the one with the subscription because it's going to be a much more meaningful purchase and it's going to have much more long-term revenue impact. So someone is going to get this. Someone is going to dominate that space with PPC. Someone is going to dominate that space with SEO. At the moment it's not Peloton and they're nowhere near doing it. And by the way, when you see a business that's not utilizing any of these channels, there's always two possibilities. Firstly, they've never tried it. Or secondly, they've tried and and it hasn't worked for them, so they've ditched it. That is clearly not the case here. They have never tried this stuff at the level that we would have expected a company with Peloton's growth and potential and audience to be doing these things. So if you're competing against Peloton, this is exciting. This race is not over yet by any means. We've seen brands like Echelon, 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 Whatever it is, fit, challenging with good quality, well-targeted Instagram ads, this space is gonna get a lot more competitive. Then of course, we've got Apple Fitness Plus, which who knows what that's gonna do to the market. It's a fascinating space that we're gonna be watching very closely. Now, I'm really curious, what would you be doing if you were Peloton's VP of digital? What sort of strategies would you be implementing? Where would you be putting your focus? How would you build on the visibility that all of these celebrities are giving the brand? How would you capitalize and leverage that? Because that feels like a massive 
massive opportunity. Let us know in the comments. I'm really keen to see what you think. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to drop us a like and a subscription. And you also might be interested in the Exposure Ninja Digital Marketing Podcast. You can find it on any podcast platform. Just search for Exposure Ninja. You'll see us. Until next time, take care.